Welcome to our channel. In this tutorial, I walk you through a simple, powerful technique in Unreal Engine 5 that will mind-blown you about controlling UV tiles and offset using just one vector with four components. Whether you are a seasoned game developer or a beginner exploring the world of materials, this method is one you need in your knowledge arsenal. By the end of this video, you have a deep understanding of how to manipulate UV tiles and offsets efficiently, giving you unprecedented control over your materials in Real Engine 5. But before starting, remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated with the latest tutorials, tips, and tricks in Unreal Engine. Also, remember to subscribe to Woodon.com as a special treat for our subscriber. We are offering free coupons for our exclusive courses, including our most recent Modeling with Unreal Engine 5, no Maya or Blender needed. In this course, you will learn how to harness the power of Unreal Engine 5 to create stunning 3D models without the need for external software like Maya or Blender. Discover more about this in the description section. Now, let's get started. For this exercise, the first thing I did was creating a third-person template a video game for Unreal. Now I'm going to add a new level. I want a very simple level like this one. Yeah, let's create a folder for it. I'm going to call that maps. And here I'm going to save the level. And I'm going to save it here in maps. The other thing before creating the material is that I'm going to import a material from the Quixel Bridge. In particular, I want to import a brick kind of a material. So let's go here to surfaces. And in surfaces, I'm going to find brick. Here we have several. I think that something like this one is, could work for our example. So I, I already downloaded it. You can download it as well, clicking this button and now add to add to the project. I can close here. And here we have the materials. Well, in fact, what we have is the textures and the materials. Now I want to create a new material based on this so I can present you the example that we want. My goal is to control the UVs associated with this material. So the first thing, let me go to content as well. And to be order, I'm going to create a new folder that I will call material. In material, I'm going to right click and select a new material. And following the standards, I'm going to call this one M, let's call it brick. Now I'm going to open the material. Let me place it here. And as you can see, we have the base node, which is this one here, always presented for every material. The first thing I want to move, and uh, the, the thing, in fact, that I'm going to move is from the material that we already download in Mega in Megascan. Okay, here it is. So you're usually going to find uh, different uh, kinds of, of materials of denominations that could be diffuse or albedo. In this case, this is the material that I'm looking for. You can see in the bottom that says albedo AXR. This is a normal AXR in the source. And here you see the ORD. But at this moment, I want to work is just with the albedo. So I can drag this material to this one, uh, the texture, sorry, to this material. And now I can let it go here. The first thing you can know is that if you want to apply the material for something, you can just drag, connect this RGB with the base color. And here it is the material already. If we apply and save, now we have the material here. And beyond that, in fact, I can say, well, I, I wish I can apply this material here. Let me go now to the materials that we created. I can apply this material here by dragging and, and dropping here. Now, I don't want to do that. I want to create an instance of the material because eventually, probably, I can set some different uh, parameters for this one. And it's a good practice not to work with the material directly, but with the, with the instance of a material. Again, because the same reason, you can define some parameters that you can control. To create an instance of this material, I just right-click here and select Create Material Instance. Usually, the number of the material instance following the, the um, the protocol to call this, it's going to be the standard is going to be MI for material instance. And if I open the material instance, you can see here it is exactly the same one that we mentioned a moment ago. Now I can 
select this floor and I can select the materials here on this section or I can drag it here directly and I have the material as you can see here. Fantastic. Now, I want to play with the with several parameters for these materials and they are associated with the UV. So let's go back to not to the material instance because here I can make change. I want to go back to this one and start playing with these parameters. The UV is a component that has two particular elements, the U and the V. Originally, you can find you can define you can define this value of UV following the texture coordinate, which is this one. And if you expand it, you can see the U tiling and the V tiling, and you can connect this directly here. And of course, you can control as well these parameters. You can say that this is five, and then you can use you can see here how you are changing the U tiling, and you can say let's say this is zero point five, and this is how this is what is happening here. Now, this is not exactly what I want because I also want to control the offset. And what is the offset? The offset refers to, let's say that we want to move this material a bit to the left or a bit to the top. This is the offset. It's how much we're going to displace these vectors in vertical or horizontal at the same time. So I don't want, I don't want to have this connection at this moment directly. Let's remove it. But I'm going to put it on one side because I am going to, I'm going to use it. I need them, in fact. To define uh, all this in a group of parameters, let's say that you want the UV, the, the uh, I'm sorry, you want the U tiling, the V tiling, and then you have the U offset and the V offset. We're going to use a vector that has four components. So I'm going to click, uh, I'm going to keep the, in the keyboard the four and then click. And here we're generated a vector that has four components. And this is what I want because I want to have the possibility of control different components. Now let's go here and I would I wish to transform this into parameters. Parameters that I'm going to use here on the brick. Let's say that is going to call it UV controls. Let's call it that way. Here it is, the parameter. Fantastic. And now let's name all these different values. So the different values can be named on this section. So let's call this one the U tile. This one will be called the B tile, the U offset, and the V offset. Excellent. As you can see, we have all the parameters here. Now, I want to play with the different values and I need to combine them because I need to make them, to convert them into a, a vector that I'm going at the end to connect here in the UVs. As you can see, the UVs has only one pin and I need to connect that pin. I need to merge all these elements. So the first part is I'm going to append these two, I'm going to use the append, and I'm going to use the append vector. Append vector, what it does is that it combines two vectors into one. In this case, the one related to the U and the one related to the V. But now I can control based on uh, this node and having transformed this node into a parameter, now I can control the values independently. Now, once I have combined these two, I need to transform it into, I, I need to apply these values that I'm controlling into the text coordinate that defines the U and the V. So how we're going to do that? Well, very simple. In this case, it's going to be just a multiply. I'm going to multiply this value with this value. And now I can connect these two. So let me show you what is going to happen now. I'm going to apply. The, the reason why you see in this white is because the U and the V values are zero. I'm multiplying by zero and I don't want that. Perfect. So these are going to be the defaults. Now let's go to the material instance. And as you can see, we have this parameter that we created a moment ago and I can open it and I can define the values here directly. Let me show you how they affect the scene by getting here. Excellent. And now I can start moving these parameters. Let's say I'm going to move the UV and I want to make it, I want to make these tiles a bit smaller. Then the, the bigger is going to be the B tile is because we're adding more tiles. And then of course they're looking here on the screen a bit smaller. If you move into the other side, let's say to 0 0.1, then you can see that the tiles are, are kind of, of big. But now 
the thing is that I can control the size of the tiles in U and in B as much as I want. And this is fantastic. Now, I still don't have control of the U, U offset or B offset. Let's get to that. And let me put the original values for a second. One, one, excellent. And save it. And let's go back here. Okay, the resting part is not really much more difficult because now we have these other two parameters that we want to play with. Let me move this one a moment to one side and this one as well. Now, I want to do something similar to this one. I want to append these two elements. So I'm going to select append and we're going the, uh, to pick the append vector and I'm going to take this one and this one. Now, the difference between what we did here that we multiply uh, these two values is that now I want to displace. I want the, the offset, the concept of the, of the offset is about that. It's about a displacement in one uh, direction or another, in U and V or horizontal and vertical. You are not changing the size of the tiles. You're just moving the size. And when we're talking about moving the size, then we are talking about an operation in vectors in fact, it's in it's, I think it's matrix that um, it is the addition. So what we're going to do is before getting to here, we're going to add these two values. So I'm going to get here and say add. And now I'm going to connect this one with this value here. And this output will be connected to the UV. Now let's apply and save. And again, let's go back to the brick. And now you can see that if I change the values of the U, you are, I'm rotating and moving, applying an offset to U or applying an offset to B. Now it can literally control all the elements in just, in just one simple node. And I love this kind of designs because sometimes when you are creating materials, you are adding a diarrhea of different nodes to control very small things. And I think that for this case, for this particular case, this is the most elegant solution for something like this. Now I can apply it, of course, here. And if I move my brick instance, I can control the values whatever I want, and I can control the displacement, the offset of the material. Thank you for tuning in to our tutorials on mastering UV tile control in Unreal Engine 5 with just one vector. Keep this trick close to you, believe me, I know you will use it. Hey, and don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below with any questions or suggestions for future tutorials. Your feedback is invaluable in shaping the content we create for you. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Woolen.com to immediately receive a free coupon for Modeling with Unreal Engine 5 No Maya or Blender needed course. Much more exclusive contents for our subscribers are on the way. Thank you again for watching and until next time, happy creating in Unreal Engine 5. See you.